All right. From South Florida to the South Bay, right? South Bay? Alan, technically, right? Uh, well, almost, yeah. Marina Del Rey, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I was Close afraid enough. it might be a uh, like not be quite. But anyway, I'm going with this. South Bay to South uh, South Florida. Um, joined with Tom Schaefer, Alan Esfin, two former colleagues, two brilliant minds. And so I was telling Alan, um, well, first of all, in, in the time we did this last week, just our Friday fodders, like this is basically like for me personally, Tom might be different for you. For me personally, I guess this is my video video journal of like into podcasting and and you can follow all the flubs and crashes and burns along the way. And I'm happy to put myself out there for everybody to uh, to watch. Um, but one thing we talked about, Tom, and, and we were talking about his new venture, um, which which uh, talk about. And I also want to talk about what you're doing, Alan, is consistency. And we the context around consistency being content marketing, like Tom's like all over my LinkedIn, all over the place. Like, and it's not just the same one I keep seeing. It's like always something new. Uh, and I'm actually curious if you like spend a whole day writing them out, plan them for the week. But um, consistency and me just making this commit to myself and, and to Tom, like, let's just do this. Like, I'll take an hour out of my day or however long these go for, like on a Friday. Like, let's just do it. Consistency, like, like consistency is king. I made that commit. Um, we already have a guest lined up for next week, which I'm excited about. But with consistency, and this goes into Alan, why I reached out this morning is routine. And when I saw you in, in LA in December, we talked a lot about routine and with what you're doing. And obviously with routine, there needs to be consistency. So I, I, the, the, the first thing I want to talk about is just routine, but probably to just get in that conversation, um, Alan, Tom, to, uh, Tom and whoever's watching here, like tell us what you're up to now with your latest venture. You, yeah, go, you go Tom, Alan. this is... Yeah. All right. No, well, no. Let me, uh, yeah, yeah. There all you right. Go. Let, let me jump in. So, um, you know, as you guys have seen, I've been involved in, in a number of different things from uh, launching a meditation company when we moved to LA, started hiking around the, the you know, the mountaintops here. And just the, there's something that happens psychologically when you're at, um, you're at a hike where you can see the horizon. Uh, apparently there's, there's a historical reason for that as we were, you know, developing into the humans that we are, that causes some kind of a feeling of safety. You know, when you're at the top of something, you can see everything, like you can see your attackers. And so we were up there. I just felt so good to just have those views and it was just magical. And we would go for like sunrise hikes and sunset hikes. And I'd been a long time meditator. So I started going up there meditating and it felt so incredible. It just you feel like you're on top of the world and so we started organizing uh meditation hikes with people and i would rent these uh, silent disco headphones and we'd have 15 people kind of hiking up you know griffith park or you know all of these different mountain tops here uh and we'd meditate at the top and i would guide people through those meditations um and uh you know that was sort of the beginning of a transformation when we moved to la uh, but little by little i was starting to you know get into fitness and uh, over time, kind of realized that, uh, you know, I needed to kind of change my life around in terms of, uh, you know, the weight that I had put on, you know, running a bunch of startups and not being paying attention to any of that. So the hikes was kind of the beginning of that. And little by little, you know, the, the diet and the food kind of changed. And so I think what's what's happened since then is that I've been, you know, very successful in terms of my, my own mental state and, you know, continuing on with meditation, adding breath work. Uh, to that super powerful techniques. And, you know, at the end of the day, I realized that my my body is an entire system that is really connected uh, through the gut. So through the food, through the fitness and the exercise and the mindset. And so uh, it worked so well for me uh, and the people that kind of were, were seeing me transform, uh, including, you know, my, my wife and daughters and, and other people on Facebook started asking me like, what the heck I was doing. And I'm like, let's just build something basically i had just done 75 hard uh which is like a 75 day in a row set of things you have to do every day you know no alcohol two workouts get on water read a book you know and i did it uh, i finally broke through a plateau that i was i was on in terms of my, my weight loss and fitness my wife did it she broke through a plateau we did it again a bunch of other people joined us and I'm like, okay, this is really powerful building challenges for people that are gonna be aggressive 
uh, when I talked to to Kirby here when he was in LA, uh, he got you know very excited about the whole 75 heart thing. And so what we decided to do is build uh, an app that has a challenge built into it. It's our own challenge. Uh, and it's got seven days, seven things you have to do every day for 90 days in a row. It's called 90 perfect days. And, uh, you know, oh. it starts with mindfulness first thing in the morning. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, it starts with mindfulness in the morning. You have to commit to doing your workout at a specific time uh, and so on. Right. There we go. Take a picture uh, to keep yourself motivated and so on. So it kind of touches the mindfulness uh, managing your diet, managing your fitness and, and everything that's kind of around that. And we do it as a group in an app that my daughter is, my 21 year old daughter is building uh, to kind of work on her self development chops that she's been sort of building over time. First thing she had actually built using React Native was um, a nutrition and sort of food planner for herself. Like that was kind of the project that she built. So it's like she's, you know, very much in the wheelhouse. And uh, so that's kind of what I'm up to is just passion project. I, I'd learned so much. The things that I'd done were so powerful that I'd be like, it would just be irresponsible not to bring this to the world. And I just could not do it. So um, there we go. Trainer Trainer AI is is the, the company and the 90 Perfect Days Challenge is the first component of that. And it's going to grow from there. And you Alan, that's incredible. Three, Congrats three on all of that. Away. No, sorry, Kirby. Yeah. Go ahead. You start in three days. Yeah. So February 7th is the beginning of the first challenge. Now people can start, you know, at any time. We're doing it through test flight. So it's like through a private uh, invitation to the test flight app. And we have a PDF for people that, uh, uh, you know, maybe have an Android. Uh, we haven't we haven't developed that Android yet as, as often. Uh, you know, you guys have been in the app business. You always kind of like, you, you, you know, the well, it'd be great to kind of start with a, you know, cross-platform framework. <laughs> um, but you know, my daughter kind of looked at it and she's like, yeah, I'm just going to use Swift. And uh, that kind of like takes you down the iOS path and we'll have to figure something else out for Android. But um, yeah, so it starts in three days. The app is, she was up literally messaging me at 5 a.m. this morning. She said, I finally got CloudKit working for the backups, uh, which is insane. So we're, I think we're ready to go. I tried that 75 hard, Alan. That thing is, uh, I mean, they don't call it 75 hard for, for nothing. It's, uh, you should call it 75 yeah. impossible is what it should be called yeah. because it's really, really hard. I mean, especially I think what's, re what's really challenging and one of the notes I took down while you were talking about, uh, you know, just kind of going through these, these items was just the power of, of how to, you know, like for someone like me, I wouldn't say I'm like, I'm not a couch potato, but someone that is a couch potato and you're saying, Hey, I want to lose 30 pounds uh, to just, get into a program like that. I mean, you got to develop some, some smaller habits first, right? I think it's important that like, you know, like just for me, I mean, just getting up at five has been, you know, a, a challenge to just get into a habit of doing that. And then slowly starting to introduce some sort of a, like just right now, maybe I'm just going to walk for a half an hour or something like that, just to get my body used to getting up, getting out the door and, and getting into a routine. But I think, I think where a lot of people fail, and I know that this is not necessarily the you know, what you're trying to solve with, with your, what you're doing now. But I just think as people can, if people were to start that, that, that process and maybe they, maybe they stumble, maybe they, they say, say to themselves, gosh, you know, I can't, I can't keep up with this. It's just too difficult. They, they just have to break the things down a little bit smaller and, and create smaller milestones for themselves because people need to see progress. Right. I think it's, again, it's like, if you say, I want to lose 30 pounds, you know, if you don't lose 30 pounds in a short amount of time, you're going to get discouraged and you're going to say, Hey, something I'm, I'm doing is not working. But, um, but you got to develop yeah. those habits and, and, and make it part of your daily schedule. So for like me, for now, right now, as I've been getting up like 4.45, in my butt in the chair at 5, that has now become, like if I, if I don't do that, I feel like I'm, I've missed out on something or I've missed part of my day. And so it's become a, an important part of my routine. So I think what that's just the what chair? What's the what? chair, Tom? Like, are you, are you, your chair is the desk chair? Like what are you doing yeah. right at five? Up, oh, you say so you yeah, start I'm, working I'm up, at five. I'm up. At, yeah, so the the new routine is I'm up at like four forty five, just kind of like just get my eyes open, you know, and then um, yeah, just button the chair at five, and I'm and I'm writing, and I'm spending about two hours working on content, and you know trying to get that exercising in, but I think 
like for me, as long as I like, if I if I decide, you know, whatever reason I'm I'm not going to go to the gym or I'm not going to go run or do whatever I want to do, I I got to do something to just check the box. I got to feel like I got to just do something to check the box that says, at least in my own mind, I said, okay, I I I showed up. I didn't knock it out of the park today, but I showed up and I checked the box. I I tried to do, you know, even if it's just like five minutes. There was one day where, um, I just. Like I just did 10 push-ups or something, which is really pathetic to admit that. It's only 10 push-ups, but I'm trying to get in shape. But hey, I, I again I checked the box, I did something. And I think there's there's some there's power in those micro. There's a great book called Atomic Habits by James Clear that talks about this stuff. So really powerful stuff. Yeah. Anyway, it, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, but but no, no, I think it's a super good point that you know, starting starting small. Uh, is key, uh, you know, James Clear says that, BJ Fogg, I think that's Tiny Habits, you know, I sort of had read all, you know, all of those books several times and started like implementing those things. So for example, um, and we, we're trying to build these things into the app, by the way, uh, sort of the whole queue, trigger, reward kind of loop. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a pull-up bar in, in our bedroom, sort of where the closet door is uh, to just do pull-ups, chin-ups, whatever. And so now, you know, first thing in the morning, I, you know, I get up, go to the closet, install that thing, you know, it's like removable. And then whenever I come out of the, the, the washroom, uh, as soon as I let go of the handle, you know, part of the trick that they, they, they explain in these books is that the, the, the cue has got to be like really simple. And it's not like, you know, after I go to the bathroom, I'm going to do pull-ups. It's like, after I let go of the handle of the bathroom, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go to the closet and do, you know, 10, 10 chin ups or pull ups or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're absolutely right that these, you know, these mechanisms have to be built in. You have to have cues, which is why, for example, in the, in the, in the challenge, the first thing you do in the morning is meditate or do mindfulness for at least a minute to kind of like set your mind straight before your feet, feet even touch the ground. The sec second thing you do is you, you click on the button and you set the time for when your workout's going to be. So you're sort of setting that expectation. You're setting a, a, a trigger and then the cue is going to be the thing's going to pop up and remind you, right? So we've tried to build those things in there. Uh, but we are going in with, you know, seven tasks. And that might fly in the face of like start, start with one. So I think it's important that people be uh, attacking this at the right time in their life. Like... I remember I was at a at a conference a few years ago, and I, I heard Andy Frisella speaking about you know a bunch of different things that he talks about, and that's kind of where I learned about seventy five hard. And I just I wasn't ready at that time. My my mind was just not there. I had to build up some some new habit skills for me to be able to attack something as hard as as it was. And and I mean I did it twice last year successfully, like from start to finish. But my mind was you know ready for it whereas two years before that it wasn't so mm -hmm. um you know i i think we we also are trying to make each habit pretty easy like none of those none of those, those things on that list are hard you know one minute of mindfulness like i have an apple watch i can just do right in there scheduling your workout taking your picture learning one small thing every day drinking the water working out 30 minutes a day you know, that could be a brisk walk. You know, it's not like two 45 minute workouts. One has to be outside like 75 hard. So I right. think, you know, for you, Tom, I think this, this kind of challenge might be more in line with, you know, something that's achievable, mm -hmm. but more about just checking those boxes, you know, day after day after day, none of which are hard, you know, rest 75 hard, like the no alcohol thing was like, well, oh. yeah, I could tell you day 76, we were in Paso <laughs> So, <laughs> my country. so Alan, my, uh, when we met in LA, definitely we met at the perfect time for me. Um, you definitely like are on my mind every day since then. It's been what, two, two something months and having this conversation and you told me about 75 hard. I never heard of it before. And just talking about your journey. And then I, uh, opened up with you and, and, and I, I've learned, um, and this is really like how this whole, like inner workings of my brain worked. I wanted to talk to Tom today. I was sitting in my gym waiting for the, um, for it to open at 445. And I was thinking about Tom, we were talking about consistency, but like routine, because I was in the middle of my Friday routine. I was like, 
I thrive on routines. Now my Friday routine this today was a little different because um, I, I could get into why, but like I woke up at 3 a.m. today. Um, like I would love to bottle this feeling right now, but like since we met pretty much Alan, uh, that was like early December, I think like December 7th, like I've been on a routine since then. And my God, like forget like any like health, um, like physical, I'm down like 15 pounds since we met. Uh, forget the mental, uh, but just everything around it, like just, just with work, like going to work and just having that done and just, I, I can't explain it. Um, but like what it does outside of those, the actual, those, those habits that you're doing, like, it's just like, like leaps and bounds. Um, um, yeah, kind of speechless, I guess. So we met, you told me about the 75 hard. Um, I, I did like a 75 light trial and it was also, we're talking December. So I went through the holidays. I did slip up. I made it all the way to new year's Eve. And um, I went through Christmas fine. I was I was slinging drinks for everybody. I was like doing all the dishes. I made it a game. Like you can't give me dishes fast enough. I can't wash before you give them to me. So I was like dish master on Christmas, sober as a sober as a whatever. But uh, New Year's Eve, I went to the Orange Bowl, uh, college football playoffs, tailgate, had some beers. I was like, I'm just doing it light anyway. I'm not gonna like really start. Um, and I pretty much gone a month. Um, so like New New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, had some drinks, whatever. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I still say like, and I feel like, I don't know what that law is where, you know, of something now you see it all the time. It's either that applying to me or 75 hard is like really like now, like it, especially more popular than it was just in December, but like, I'll be on like random Facebook chats of, of other people doing it. Like I'm kind of doing a modified version. Um, and they're asking me what my modified version is. So I'm definitely not doing 75 hard. Not because I couldn't, um, but because it just weren't like what I'm trying to get out of it. And so I guess to go into like when I met you, Alan, I was saying like, I'm not in any routine right now. Like it's just mentally taxing. Work is suffering as a result. I know what I need to do, but like I'm busy working. And, and then basically like, let's just say it, it's a snowball thing. And I think the takeaway here is it's so important to put yourself first before doing anything else because it's so easy to let everything slip. So for example, let's say I'm working one late night and, and I'll get less sleep than I want. Let's say I'm only going to get like four hours of sleep. I'll tell myself, eat it. Like it's going to suck that first day, go to the gym in the morning and you'll, you'll just kind of go follow in that routine. So I'll wake up in the morning be like, Oh man, like I'm tired. Schedule's a little flexible in the afternoon. I'll just go in the afternoon. Well, I start work, I get busy, stuff comes in, planned and unplanned. All of a sudden, I don't have time to go to the gym. Not going to go afterwards. Let's try it again. And meanwhile, and because I've been like a really pretty healthy guy, I know what needs, I know what I need to do and all that. Part of me um, that, that hurts me as well. I know, I, I like, I've, I've tried the bodybuilding thing before. I've fluctuated in weight. Like, I, I'm pretty good with like, I can like zone in and like get the results. I just need the consistency. But like when I'm inconsistent, I'll also be like, eh, this order pizza, drink more beer. And then I, like, I know what I need to do and I'll just start it tomorrow. But if I don't have that routine, it just lately for me and, and maybe current me, like I need a routine to start my day to set everything up for success. Like, like never been happier. Uh, never been more productive. I've never started more podcasts or Friday fodders. Um, like to, it, like it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, man, I, I just want to jump in real quick because I've, I've been kind of going through the same thing as, as I've talked about before with getting up at five and, uh, you know, just trying to commit to to a schedule. And the the power of the routine is is something that I, yeah, I just didn't realize how how much of an impact it makes on not only your productivity because you're, you know, you're boxing yourself in and you're doing things, you're sitting down doing the work, whatever it is, if it's a workout or if it's just writing something or whatever – you're doing it, you're giving yourself the time to do that. But then there's something just to be said about structure in your life. Um, even like just, you know, our surroundings, I mean, having a place where everything goes and, and not having chaos in your life. I mean, when it's chaotic, it's hard to focus. It's like, it's just really hard to do the things that we're all involved in and doing and giving our attention to customers and building businesses and all these things. Like the last thing that you need is, is chaos in your, in your life. You've got to be able to get yourself onto a normal schedule. And so, and, and it's hard to believe I, I've gone this long. I mean, I've had times where I knew I was going to, okay, today's now like for between this time and this time I'm going to be working or whatever. But 
I've never gotten it to the point where like, okay, it's like five is writing time, five to seven, I'm writing seven to seven 30. I'm taking the dogs out seven 30 to eight 30. I'm doing this or whatever. And then by nine, okay, now I'm back to LinkedIn. I'm doing my, my content, you know, I'm doing my, um, my, uh, my engagement with the audience or whatever. I'm, I'm responding to things. Everything is blocked out. And there's something about that. It's just powerful. It gives you a sense of accomplishment. It just makes you feel like you're you're knocking things out of your of your day. And it is awesome. I yeah. can't describe that feeling either. And um, that's and that's why when you said something earlier about if you just miss something, for me, if I just miss something, or sometimes I'm late on something where it's like it's like shit. This was at seven fifteen. I was I should have been out the door at seven with the dogs or something. Um, you know, I I just I just allow that to be missed, but then I pick the schedule up where, where I can. And I just continue on with the rest of the day. I don't beat myself up over it. I don't get depressed over it. I just allow myself to miss, miss a sec, you know, miss a a segment of the day. And I, and I just make it up somewhere else. Or yeah, if I, if I get up at six instead of five, okay, now I've only got an hour to write. Like I don't extend the blocks out. I, I really try to keep it tight. And it's been extremely powerful. And like you said, I've been, I've personally been more productive following that routine than ever before. So I know I'm definitely, go ahead. I'm I'm curious about how, how the confidence piece kind of comes into this, because this is, I I think entrepreneurs and we're, you know, we're all entrepreneurs and and people that are watching this um, now or later uh, probably fit into that as well, or, or want to want to be entrepreneurs. And part of the reason we do that is, you know, freedom of doing what we want, when we want and, you know, not follow rules and so on. So historically myself, uh, I have never been a routine guy. In fact, I have been an anti-routine guy. I want to go to bed when I want, wake up when I want, not have to drive into an office. Like it's, you know, we are the anti-routine people in general. So for us to be able to kind of shift that way is we're realizing the power of it and the confidence that that builds because it means you can get a lot of shit done. You can be healthy. Like, look, I have, you know, I have a full-time job, you know, I'm spending evenings and and weekends learning about health and fitness, you know, advising my daughter on this app that she's building. Like it's, it's a lot of time and there's so much shit you can do if you're properly organized and follow a structure. So that's, you know, it is what I think we're all learning and we're also trying to build, uh, you know, a, a trainer AI, which is, you know, the 30, 60, 90 day kind of approach to transforming your life and building uh, a mindset that is different from when you started. And the, and the side benefits are, you know, getting stronger, losing weight, getting healthy, all that kind of stuff. But you, you should emerge a different person uh, at the end of the 90 days. And that's, that's really what we're after, um, which is why we make it a little easier too, because all of the things that are on that list should be things you're doing every day for the rest of your life. You know, not like nobody's going to do two workouts a day and not drink alcohol if they want to drink alcohol for the rest of their life. So a lot of people feel lost after they do 75 hard. They just feel like this emptiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, they binge, they do all sorts of things. Right. And for us, it's like, no, 90 days isn't the end. 90 days is really the next transition to just maintaining that for the rest of your life. It's not if it's impossible. Yeah. I've yeah, always I guess it's intended to be just like a reboot, just like a, an abrupt reboot, and then you hopefully will carry on. But yeah, there's um, with that type of a program, it's so intensive and so not normal, right? Like that's not a normal thing for people to do consistently. Um, that yeah, you kind of feel like you're like, what? What? How do I fill in my time now after after that's all over? I, I would just I would just add one more thing. I would just say when it comes to the habits and and trying to build up to that. Uh, whatever it is you're trying to do that, you know, give yourself permission to, to be terrible, um, to not, you know, not, not be able to be whatever it is in your mind that you're going to be right away and allow yourself the time to, as you're, as you're developing that skill or that habit to do, to do what it is. Like if it's working out, just, you're not going to be uh, like, you know, Kirby, you've been working out for a long time. I, if I were to start going to the gym, I don't have expectations that I'm going to, you know, develop a pattern that you have and, but I've got to just work on myself and just take it little by little. And I think, I think people just beat themselves up too much too, when they're, when they're trying to do new things and change, change things about themselves or again, acquire habits. And, you know, you just gotta be, you gotta be okay with, uh, with sucking for a little while and then just, yeah, just, just, don't, show don't, up and, just don't suck. Yeah. Don't suck more than one day in a row though. I think that's the, the, mm. 
you know, the, not the, the counter to that, but it's like you screw up, you're like, okay, but just, you cannot kind of go, okay, for the rest of the week, I'm just going to like, you know, right. Like, no, you get it right back on very quick, quickly. And anyway, that's my, my piece of that. Yeah. And that's sure. been, that's, that was basically like my uh, Q4 of 2021 snowball, which I met you kind of at the end of that Q4 is like, I need some, uh, I need structure. Um, like willpower was my strongest attribute forever. Like I didn't have the willpower to like just do it like that first day in a row to like let it uh, let the pattern continue. But like you tell like our conversation, you mentioned the 75 hard thing, like snap me into it. Like I've been uh, pretty, pretty good since. And so come three days from now, February 7th, when you start, when the first uh, 90 day challenge starts, I'll be doing both, uh, I guess, 75 hard slash modified. And then the uh, 98 challenge as well. And the modified, what I'm doing is, and like I said, for me, it's like the biggest thing and the most important thing to me is um, is uh, the, 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 um, the, the routine and getting in that routine. Uh, that's the number one most important thing to me. So what I'm doing is, uh, and actually today I, is the first day since Jan, Jan 1 that I, maybe Jan 2, right? That was on a Monday, that I broke my 75 hard modified and that is uh so i've been doing two workouts a day one every every out one outside every day um and they were supposed to alan they're supposed to normally be spread apart three hours right so that's modification well that's modification one like i like that's that's and i know it's supposed to be hard that's the point right um but for for how i'm modifying it it's really working for me um i did a couple the, the first days like spread out but um, like between the showers and the multiple things, I'll just all, I'm also losing time out of the work. Um, so I'll do like, I'll do an hour at the gym. I'll come home and I'll go for an hour long walk. And which is great because usually I'm taking one of the kids or the dog with me too. So they're getting exercise or something to look at that's uh, just not the inside of the house. So I'm doing two yeah. workouts a day, a little longer than uh, 75 hard. They're not spaced out. Um, I've definitely done some walks in the rain um let's see i'm not drinking so that's very par on like the, the gallon of water thing i'm pretty sure i drink like two gallons of water i'm not measuring it though the picture i'm doing but if i miss one it's not a big deal um although the one i took yesterday is the first one was like wow that's really different than the first one um like big yeah. time but i'm still i'm still going i got like i started on jan, jan actually jan january 10th is when i started i believe Trying to think what I was doing that first week of January. Um, so if, you know, I, next week when we when we get started on this, you can just stop seventy five hard entirely and just use ninety perfect days because we have uh, there's the seven initial tasks that you had you had put up on the screen, uh, and then we have bonus tasks that you can you can add on to it. So there is a no alcohol bonus task. There is a um, second workout bonus task. There's other things like taking supplement, you know, taking your supplements. There's you know uh, a bunch of other things. So if you want to kind of uh, create the equivalent, uh, and there's a no alcohol uh, bonus task as well. And, and cold showers. Cold showers on that list. Yep. Um, so there's really no reason to do 75 hard if you want to do. Like if you want to do something really hard and do it for 90 days, just do 90 perfect days and add those bonus tasks because the, the extra thing that you're going to get. And, and by the way, Kirby, like, do not tell me you're doing a modified 90 perfect days. I'm going to kick you off the platform. <laughs> if, you, if you're going to do it, you got to do it. Like no, no modifications, right? Like uh, you, you, you're not going to be able to claim that you completed the challenge um, unless you're actually follow, following it. Uh, but we're trying I, to make it not, not as hard. Like, the, the three hour separation between workouts, I think the intent for that is that, yes, it makes it hard, but that you're not working out for an hour and a half. Like, you know, sometimes I'll go on a super long bike ride, like three, four, five hours. Uh, that, that would count as one workout. So what they don't want you to do is do one workout that's 90 minutes instead of 245s, right? I, yeah. I get that. Um, so we don't, you know, we don't have that rule. So we've kind of relaxed some of the things that, you know, I know why they're there. Um, just do two separate workouts, which is what you're doing. So I think that's kind of, you know, that's acceptable that way, right? And uh, one outside, one outside, except for yeah. today, I broke, I broke it. So here's why, um, and, and this is kind of the, the, how this whole alignment with the three of us happened. Um, so I, my, my mother-in-law asked me to join her at Pilates 
And so part of what I'm doing, that's my modified 75 days. This is nowhere on the list. But what I want to do is uh, increase mobility, flexibility, and core strength. So I'll do like minute long planks several times a day. I'm uh, doing all sorts of stretches. Um, I, I don't know if they're uh, certified by anybody. I got a big long stretching strap and some yoga blocks and it's just me doing some stretches and following along some YouTube videos. But like, that's what I'm applying to it as well. I want to get more flexible, build more core strength. Like I'm a strong guy. So today I did Pilates, like, like doing Pilates and the bridges. Holy shit, the bridges were hundred times more difficult than doing leg press with 450 pounds a day. Like no questions asked. Like I was shaking. Like I thought I was going to break the damn, uh, whatever they call the uh, Pilates table. Um, so anyway, that, that, that Pilates was indoor, but I wanted to go like do that with her. I wanted to try it. Um, so what I did, um, and to make this whole schedule work because I have kids, I need to ship out of the door in the morning is I woke up at 3 AM today. Um, I answered some emails. I ate, and I, like, I, I, I'm a guy like, well, because there's health reasons, nutrition reasons why, like I'll never go to the gym on an empty stomach. I'll do cardio on an empty stomach. I'll never like move weights with an empty stomach. So I have to eat food, have to let it digest. And so I did that. I started my day at three. Uh, my gym doesn't open till five. So I had this whole period and I was answering emails. And um, Alan, you mentioned like setting a purpose reminder to like go to the gym. What I've been doing is is not necessarily that but like so many times uh not recently but like back in the day like um is i would wake up with intentions to go in the gym but also if i if i bring a laptop out i could just get sucked into work at like 5 a.m all of a sudden it's 9 30 i never went to the gym and like well i can't go now it's it's busy it's, it's the middle of the work day um so what i'll do is i'll so what i did today and, and i'll pretty much do this every day just a little later um I woke up early today is I'll eat my food and I'll just take our minivan down to the gym parking lot and sit in it, let it digest, do some emails. I'm playing Wordle. Um, and then when the gym, when, it, when my food is digested and or today in the case of the gym opens its doors, I go to the gym. Like nothing can keep me from going to the gym at that point. When I make the effort, I'm sitting in the parking lot ready to go. So yeah, today has been a long day. You just said, you just said minivan and Wordle in, in the same sentence. And my, my mind's just- I don't like, even know you oh. anymore. No, like, no. Who are you? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm okay. evolving. I'm, I'm more mobile, flexible, um, structured, Kirby. And so I had an aha moment. Speaking of structure, and Tom, you mentioned like the blocking out, like for tasks on your calendar. Like I always just thought of myself like flexible, like not so structured guy. Um, and I think a lot of that is because like, oh, I, I'm sure Tom knows this. I have ADD. I'm sure anybody who's ever heard me talk is like, yeah, that guy's got ADD. But I, I had this aha moment talking to somebody, I, I, I won't mention who, um, within the streaming industry, not that that's relevant, but they're like, I have ADD, I need structure. And I, I, was, I was thinking, what? I didn't say that. I just in my head, I'm like, what? And he was talking me through it. It's like, that's interesting. And then it was like, I should have known this, uh, stupid dummy. Uh, but like all of a sudden, like, wow, like I really thrive in structure, which is why you're I'm you're so the king of the time. You're the king of the time box. I mean, I don't understand. Like we we were we're like on totally different wavelengths now. Well, now you're back. Now you're back into like the structure. But at one point, like you were you were all about like saying like, hey, this is my schedule. Like here's my I'm gonna be doing emails from seven thirty to eight thirty, and like don't talk to me. My door's closed. Like type of stuff. Okay. You know? uh, so maybe I knew that without realizing it, and then yeah, at some point I lost it. But um, what's 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 interesting is uh, I put uh, like I'll block off time on my calendar too for tasks like emails, uh, blah 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 blah. I'll have uh, whatever they are. But like sometimes my days will be completely blocked. I've actually had like colleagues say, "Dude, you're never available." I'm like, "Oh no, I didn't think <laughs> this is kind of backfired." It's like, "No, dude, I just have to block my time. Like I'm available most of the time." I think. Uh, yeah. But definitely reach out. Like, don't let the calendar fool you. I just have to block it out. It's, it's, it's. And like, it's and like now, I'm experimenting with ideas. Like, you know, I'm only going to have meetings on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and Mondays and Fridays, and like the weekends now are just like free for all content days or whatever I want to do. But yeah, like trying to trying to just get more rigid with, you know, my time and all that. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely a process, and it takes a while. It doesn't just happen overnight. You got to just start small. And just introduce little changes, and eventually they just compound, as as James says, James Clear says it's compound, compounding uh, habits become larger habits, and yeah, it's, it all works together. So I'm I'm definitely feeling it. I'm feeling really good about you know it. I do need to introduce more 
exercise into my into my life. I'm trying to do that. I've been like trying to run in the mornings. I had this block of time where I could easily run. I'm doing that sometimes, but I'm just not consistent with it. I need to, I need to get back on that. So I'm going to try this 90 day, uh, 90, 90 perfect, perfect days. Hundred percent going to try this. I'm I'm excited about it, Alan. It sounds really really interesting. So I will be joining you on this. When is this? The next one starts. What next? Well, we so a bunch of us start on the seventh. Uh, people okay. can really start whenever they want, but uh, we're going to be sending the the app uh, via test flight over the weekend. Uh, people can start whenever you know whenever they're ready. They're just kind of because I think part of the idea is also, and this is what I've been sort of trying to drill into the first 50 people that we have in the beta trial is to to start the challenge prepared so you should have written down what your so for example one of the check boxes is to follow a diet and, and i don't necessarily mean to follow like a fad diet it just means like this is going to be my approach to eating writing it down so that at, at the end of the day like literally at the end of the day every day you can look at what you ate you don't have to record it if you don't want to but you'd be like, yes, I followed my rules. You know, I intermittent fasted or I didn't have any sugar or I didn't have any refined carbs, like whatever the rules are for you, you followed them. So uh, it's important to, to go in prepared with a plan so that you're not just like the challenge is starting. I don't know what my meal plan or my, my workout plan is, is going to be. Right. So um, I'm, trying to get people encouraged and if they need help, I, you know, I, I tell them what I'm doing and then they can kind of do the same thing if they want or whatever. Um, so I'm, 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 I'd love to kind of have you on the, on the challenge. Uh, if you're, if you're ready to roll, it sounds like you're already building habits. Uh, let's, let's do it. Um, you know, one of the things that I want to leave you guys with and, and sort of everybody else with, it sounds like, you know, you've, you've uh, read James clear and, you know, tiny habits, atomic habits. There's, there's a bunch of really good ones. It's, developing the skill of developing habits. I mean, can you imagine, never mind just building the specific habits like working out, but like it, it'd be able to say, like one of the things that my wife is doing is she's learning Italian and she's learning sign language. It's just like you're building the habit of like learning five words every day in, in both of those approaches. Um, and you just like imagine if you could just decide on something and you're just going to stick with it until you, you break through the other side like it's it's super powerful and it's yeah. just never been part of my lexicon um, yeah same. it is now same here yep Wait, are you guys doing cold showers just by chance yep five minutes five minute cold shower um you can start with a hot shower that's fine i mean i think the contrast actually is is uh is really part of the benefit um and it also forces you to breathe and i freaking hate them so it's a good so, reason to do it i'm like bizarre are you so i absolutely love cold showers but i don't do them i, I don't have a good re i guess my biggest reason um i mean the reason is myself so if you point your finger there's three always point back at you the reason is me but my shower is kind of tricky to just get like it runs hot and it, there's no like it there's no like quick cold period. And I, and the only way I think I can do it with my shower to have to, it'd have to just be a consistent cold shower, which I actually prefer um, for all the breathing you mentioned. And I think you get more out of that than like starting hot and just doing like a 30 seconds cold. Um, I, re, I, I, I was doing cold showers for a while. Um, I'd love to start doing them. Like I think they're this only is like benefit. A, it's like a new thing now. I mean, like they're doing this, like if, if I'm not, I'm not saying I, I'm on TikTok a lot, but I, I do get in there every now and then. And I see one of the trends is this, these cold plunges where people are going out, like these people are living in, you know, in really cold climates and they go out and they have these, these tubs that are just frozen over. They have to actually break the ice and then they get into that and they just hang out for, you know, a minute or two, but it's supposedly mine. You know, it really is, I was about to say mind blowing, but it's, it's actually really good for the body reduces inflammation and has all these other benefits like euphoric and feeling really good and feel, you know, so I'm, I want to do it. I just, it's kind of embarrassing. Like my, I don't really have that cold of, of water. I don't have access to that. I could go into my pool, but it's like, you know, what's it like 67 yeah. degrees, 70 degrees, right? Runs a little, runs a little hotter yeah. here in Florida. Yeah, it's the harder water. to get the cold water down here. Yeah, um, but but you don't you don't even need to go to that extreme. I mean, if you if anybody that follows Wim Hof, you know, the, he's the Ice Man and all that kind of stuff. But even he says, 
um, that you know a five minute cold shower is really all you need and you just run it as cold as you can and, and yes you can get a cold plunge some people will convert um, freezers you know they take the lid off and they use that you, you can also buy you know ready-made things that, that do that but honestly I think just a five minute cold shower on like the coldest it can be um, is really beneficial and I, and I can, I can throw in uh, one of the, the specific tips around that um, not how to do it because I think that's pretty straightforward but kind of why mm -hmm. to, why do it it's basically the concept of, of hormesis so whenever you you are stressing your body in a way that causes it to think oh shit I'm gonna die or I'm in trouble certain things happen inside your body uh, like but people hear about autophagy in, in the context of fasting so your body's in a stress situation where it's killing off cells that are not operating well, it's recycling them. Uh, it's basically uh, essentially getting your body ready for bad times. And so fasting does that um, exercise to some degree, hot and cold. So why that's why sauna is really good for you because it's, it's very hot, you know, cycling back and forth is really good, but just the cold after the hot shower is really good. So it, it's really doing some powerful things inside your body that don't just make you feel good, uh, but they actually uh, make you live longer. Like it's a health span, uh, lifespan thing. Um, so it's, it's pretty magical. And so, you know, when, whenever you're suffering doing it, you just think like, I just added, you know, that five minute cold shower added five minutes to my health span, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how I'm trying yeah. to think about it. Well, a lot of times I'll go into it like, whatever it is, let's say Kirby, you're trying to grow 4322X. Like you try to do that, but you can't take a five minute cold shower. Like, come on, mind over matter. Like if you can't do that, you really like, I always like to also tell myself like thrive in uncomfortable situations. I think yeah. it's the latest one and like thrive in uncomfortability. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing as entrepreneurs, right? And you can't go take a five minute shower. Um, uh, quick anecdote on cold showers and then South Florida running a little hot. Um, so I, I forget the name of it, but I'll just call it the Kanata Inn in Ottawa. Uh, Danny, this few couple of years ago, Alan, Danny Baldwin was picking me up right outside. Of, like, it, it's, and I think my first words like getting to his car, I was like, holy shit, are the cold showers cold up here in Canada? Damn. Oh, yeah. They're, they're coming and from the ground and it's frozen. And, yeah, and I was living in New York at the time, so not even Florida. Just that difference was just, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Barry, uh, Tom, do them. I'll start them too. And we'll, we'll, we'll chat about it. Yeah, let's uh, do it, man. I mean, I love them. Just don't do them. Yep. If, if there's some breath work you should look into as you, as you uh, prepare for it, um, which is very helpful. And I think one of the things that, that you might find happens over time, if you keep it up long enough, is that your, your body will start driving more blood to, to your skin. Basically, your capillaries that tend to shrink when, it, when it's cold. When it's panicking because it's trying to protect the inside of your you know your organs right from from freezing and dying mm. as soon as you can do the breath work and you do that enough times you actually will feel less cold uh in, in doing the cold showers like it's not just a mm. mental thing like physically things are happening that your body's yeah. like no this is cool it's not going to kill me I, i'm i can just let the blood flow <laughs> Yeah, I've seen I've seen the people that are doing that regularly. Like like they show you the progress. Like the first time that they're like they can barely breathe, they can't catch their breath, and then like week you know week four or five, they're just like kind of getting in there. So yeah, there's definitely something physical going on there for the resistance yep. to it. It's pretty interesting. Well, man, we we've, we've been all over the place today. Not not too bad, but we've been uh, talking about a lot of interesting things with habits and staying healthy and yeah. Yeah, now, what's your what's your best what's your best um, diet tip for aggressive, but within the healthy within a healthy uh, boundaries for yep. for some weight loss? Like, what's the what's the one thing? Which I already know the answer to this. I'm pretty sure it's like sodas, eliminating all all sugar. Essentially, sodas are the worst thing you can drink. What do you have any? What's your tips for? for that just for like weight loss yeah. incorporating what you're doing but also like what's your best diet to accelerate that process yeah so i think i think there's two things that that have worked for me that i've researched like you know i i, I spend hours on pubmed every night 
uh, you know, looking at the latest research. Um, and, and there's really two things that I think I, I can share with you guys. One is that um, insulin is really the, the, let's call it the master fat hormone. And here, here's an example of how incredibly powerful it can be. Uh, so people that are uh, have type, type one diabetes that basically their pancreas does not uh, create any insulin and they have to actually inject it on a daily basis. Those people, uh, they're not injecting enough insulin, could eat 10,000 calories a day and not put on a pound. Huh. The only way that the energy that's in your blood, you know, the glucose uh, especially, will get stored in your fat cells is if there is insulin there. And in addition, the only way that the fat is going to be released from your fat cells to get burned as energy, regardless of what kind of exercise you're doing, is if the insulin is low. So I think I'm not answering the question directly and I will kind of get around to it, but it's really all revolves around that. And so basically the kinds of things that uh, I've they've been super effective for me that have sort of like kept me from slipping back into weight gain, even though, you know, I might have a pizza here and there or a couple of beers is um, what they call it time restricted uh, eating or intermittent fasting. People, you know, people are talking about it left, right and center. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to just kind of go to that and be like, oh, you had another guy talking about intermittent fasting. <laughs> it's that it's that you are. But I want people to understand why that is. First, you're going to probably have fewer calories. So that's kind of important. But you're going to allow your insulin to be low most of the time and so uh, working out fasted is incredibly powerful because uh, you're not going to have a lot of glucose in your system your body is going to need energy your insulin is going to be low and your and your fat cells are going to release the fat and so i think that's um, intermittent fasting has allowed me to be consistent and not regain the weight back i think that's been incredibly powerful uh, for me uh, and again uh, I'm not going to say the word keto, but, um, you know, being low carb, like under a hundred grams, typically under 50, uh, if I'm really going to an extreme case is it's just such a healthy thing. And if I do have, uh, carbs, uh, I'll be more like resistant starches. Like you can, you know, cook your rice, put it in the fridge and then reheat it and, and it becomes, uh, less, uh, glycemic let's say so it's going to spike your insulin less so for me it's really all about controlling the insulin what? response and keeping that low yeah never heard of that one lower yeah. the i yeah. mean can you, can you throw bananas in there and it lower the glycemic index like anything I, yeah so i think you can do that with with uh, potatoes like sweet potatoes are are, are great for you hmm. um so if something happens to the starch that ends up uh essentially resisting to, from uh, being digested basically so um that th those are kind of the the, the two key tips I, i'm going to throw one more at you because this is something that um i think a lot of people don't necessarily know uh, especially when you're starting to do more resistance training and weight training uh, a lot of people will talk about uh, you know protein and kind of not eating enough protein There's a couple of things that are important um as you get older, your body breaks the protein down less effectively, and you really need protein for every for every part of your body. Never mind building muscle, right? Uh, you would definitely need protein for building muscle. So, as we age, some of the percentages, some of the rules that people give you, you need to kind of adjust those. So, I'll let you guys kind of do your own your own research, but it, it really has to do with grams of protein uh, per per pound of lean body weight. Um, and there's general rules that are out there, but, uh, as we get older, we need to kind of, um, have more protein than the, what those general rules indicate. And on top of that, uh, protein tends to take about 20% of the calories that are in that protein, whatever it is that you're having to break down the protein. So if you have a hundred calories of, you know, steak, let's say, uh, only eight of those calories are actually going to get stored and used. The rest are going to be burnt up, just breaking down that protein. And so I think a lot of people, uh, you know, tend to have too many carbs and, and not enough protein uh, mm. for sure. And I'll let other people decide around 
you know, fat content and keto and all of that kind of stuff. But Alan, what's your, what's your, what's your, what's your period for fasting when you do an intermediate, intermediate, uh, intermittent fast, what's your, what's your time period? Yeah. So because I work out most days, um, I would do, I do want to make sure that I get the protein in there. So I will tend to go with a six or eight hour eating window, usually between 10 and six is sort of my window. Um, and what I, what I'll have in the morning. So I'll have, I'll have coffee with the MCT oil first thing in the morning. So that doesn't break your fast. Uh, and then at 10, I'll have a Greek yogurt that has sort of double the amount of protein of regular yogurt. Um, so I'll have that with nuts and whatever. So that'll be my, my first meal. And then I try to wrap it up at uh, six and that, that cool. works for me, um, fairly well. And, and I just, I don't, I don't get hungry like I used to, uh, your body kind of gets, you know, fat adapted and it, it just, it's, it's not like you're, it's a starvation mode at all. That's great. Wow. Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. Awesome, Alan. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Alan, where where can uh, people go to learn more about the 90, the 90, 90 perfect, perfect days. days challenge? Yeah, so they can go to uh, trainer, so T-R-A-I-N-R-A-I.com, so trainerai.com, or just Google 90 perfect days challenge. Uh, we have a private group on Facebook as well, the 90 Perfect Days Challenge. Probably the most straightforward way to do it. Just go to Google, search for that. Uh, you can request to be uh, added to the private group. Uh, we're kind of a small, safe community, uh, trying to really uh, contain it to um, to good people that are going to help each other and contribute. Because that's the other part that we haven't talked, you know, uh, Tom Kirby, about kind of like the, the community support. Um, and kind of doing this with, with other people. Had I not been doing it with, with my wife initially on the 75 heart, I just, I, I don't think I would have succeeded at it. And then my, you know, my daughter has joined in, which is kind of what led us to kind of build this whole thing together. Um, so it's important to have other people joining you if you can, uh, a spouse, a friend or whatever, you know, you guys are friends, so you guys are gonna do it together. That's awesome. And then we have the, the Facebook group as well. Yeah, accountability partners. Alan, huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, I think that that's a wrap. I love the conversation and Tom next week. Uh, what, so it, it'll be like the two days before the Super Bowl, And so actually all, all this week, I have so many questions and Alan, you're actually like a great one to talk to about. Like, I think there's a lot of things like you'd be a great person to talk to about one of which I have so many advertising questions, like TV advertising questions. And I it just I think the Super Bowl is kind of why my head's like so much into advertising, and, and that's not a world I, I live or breathe. But uh, we have uh, Stephen Strong from Origin Media next week going to chat oh, right with on. us, and we're just going to grill him with a bunch of questions um, because they're doing some cool shit with uh, reimagining ads and, and 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 all that. They definitely have their own opinions. Him and Fred, so uh, we'll chat with Stephen. But I uh, wish you very guys out, they're very outspoken. They're very outspoken. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. All right. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Have a great Thanks, weekend. Alan. Thanks, Kirby. Take See you guys. Later. See ya. All right. Bye, Bye guys.